Sunday morning, January 20th, 2019. My most uh, recent video before this one was about the concept of dimension and synergetics, and it was kind of technical. I went through a bunch of pictures. And I did it all in one cut, like I didn't go back and edit. And I'm practicing that discipline because I'm thinking, you know, live improv, improv. I'm thinking how I want to develop my ability to just deliver. And I do this for a living sometimes as a Python teacher as well. So this is a, a one take like that one was. And my purpose here is to address myself to say arts and crafts makerspace type teachers who just want to share the content. You've seen the polyhedrons and how they fit together, at least to the point where you think it's pretty cool. But what you're concerned about is you're a busy person. You don't have time to wade into the whole fuller corpus. What other landmines might be buried there? In other words, do you want to take on the baggage of the whole fuller corpus? And I'm not saying you don't. I'm, I taken on a lot of it, but let me just, in terms of baggage, here's an excellent bibliography by the Synchronophile, which will, you know, if you're curious about how much is out there regarding this Bucky Fuller character, both by him and, and about him, there's a lot, and that's what's intimidating in a way. You don't know if you have time to look into it, and shouldn't you before you teach the geometry, and I'm saying no. You don't have to. You can get it out of order. You can get into the 3D printing. What I've got in the background is my trip to a local library, a makerspace, like I'm a tax-paying uh, Multnomah County guy with a library card, and part of what I get for my taxes, you could say, is access to these excellent facilities, including a, a really good library system. Portland is quite proud of it. And so I drove out there last Sunday, a week from today in the past, and uh, got some free training. First, I went around the library. I got there a little bit early, so the pictures you're seeing now are from just my, you know, walking around, checking it out. And there, there's a lot of Russian. There's a lot of people from native speakers from all over, right, because this is Portland, Oregon. Lots of immigration, refugees. Uh, I talk about that in some of my medium stories. In fact, to situate you more in terms of time and space, just for context, I was writing World Game Round 2 very recently. If you have access to medium and these stories are still there, then you know if you want some context as to what was going on at the time, we had stuff going on in France with the yellow vests, and uh, the U.S. was having a government shutdown at this time. Remember that. So here we go, uh, back to the Makerspace Tour. What I'm saying in this particular video, having made the last one about some very technical use of the term dimension and so forth, is feel free to run ahead with just the measuring cup aspect of this, where you want to have these five scaled S modules. What, what I was doing in this trip is getting three Phi, phi up of the S module and Phi down of the S module. Now, on this first visit, I only had time to do two of those, the original S module and the Phi down. Now, this is the original, no, this is the slicer software that we're looking at here. So I did some research on YouTube. I learned there was going to be the slicer that starts from what's called the STL file, which is renderable in high-end or, you know, I haven't explored how it looks in SketchUp yet. This is on Rhino, and I got the S, S left and right with lid without A, B modules and E module from the Flextegrity guys because they know their business in terms of CAD and all this kind of thing. They're a high-end production, and I'm just trying to do <laughs> – excuse me, sorry – just trying to do, like, basic – art stuff, like arts and crafts. I'm kind of pitching this to to teachers, right? So like like a makerspace people who want to do some of this stuff but don't necessarily have time or even the inclination to like wade into all the Bucky writings and what will you be accused of if you are caught teaching this stuff because it kind of feels underground almost because no one is hardly at this point. So why not and so forth? 
And in this political climate, you know, we'll, what will you be accused of? What will will you be um, a Russian bot if you teach this stuff? Will you be a globalist? You know, what is it that they will throw at you if you are caught sharing S modules of different phi scales? And I'm saying don't worry about it. You don't have to, like, bite off everything when you bite off a little bit. And synergetics is thick, and a lot of people are like, I will never read anything that thick. And my friends tell me it's like nonsense. It's like Finnegan's Wake or something. That's a book by James Joyce. Uh, if you haven't seen Finnegan's Wake, do check it out. It's it's inspirational for a lot of future writing. So I, I can't say that just because something's nonsense, it's not therefore has no value, right? I'm not one of those kind of people. Nonsense comes in many wonderful forms. I could be a connoisseur of nonsense, like fine wines. But I find more in synergetics clearly than just, you know, it's not like Finnegan's Wake to me. I get more interesting geometry out of it the longer I look into it. So for me, it's rewarding because of what I get and the community that's built up, who I get to know. Same with Python. That community is very cool. I've been in the Python community for a long time, and, you know, there are political factions and shifts and eddies and all this kind of stuff, especially around education, which is so contentious, right? And that's another point. You're in this kind of math war environment in the United States. There's STEM. There's PATH. Where does all this, like, concentric hierarchy stuff fit in? And I'm suggesting in a makerspace which could be like an arts and crafts context. This is the preferred sort of environment for studying synergetics where you can do some stuff, right? And you can you can let your imagination loose, but you've got tools. So here we go, the S modules. That's the, the home base size. We actually printed it at 50%, and then we're doing phi up and phi down. I've got to, like, kill the phone there. Uh, man, my Android's taking forever to charge these days. Thank you to my daughter for giving me the iPhone 6. At the time of this writing, we're up to the 10 and so on, but I'm just going to probably go from this. No, no reflection on Android in general, but, you know, my physical phone is in bad shape. So I went through this whole training with the printer. The, glow, the glow-in-the-dark uh, fiber was queued up on the smaller printer and ended up having some problems, so we switched to a larger printer to finish the job, and everything worked. It came out with the phi size, phi scale down, and the home base, which, as I was starting to say, was 50% of the original. So the next time I visit, we'll go phi up, and I'll have three uh, versions of the S module, phi up and phi down from the original. Now, I have Jupyter Notebooks, other videos. If what I'm saying sounds kind of like gibberish, Basically, we have these modules in synergetics. By module, I just mean like a wedge shape, um, an irregular tetrahedron. And there's a limited uh, number of shapes that we're starting with here, the A, B, E, S. So S is one of them. And it's a shape, right? So you've seen the pictures. And if you know what I'm talking about, that's great. If you don't know, then there's a, a hole in your knowledge here, and you're wondering if you need or want to fill that hole, perhaps. And I'm addressing myself to you. You'll need to find maybe someone who can help you uh, get there quicker, like I do, like I needed with this 3D printing stuff. I need help to do what I do. You need help to do what you do. So whatever help you need, you know, think about a team of people. Think about your learning process as you help them, they help you. It's a collaborative effort. It's not like I'm going to hide my work and don't you dare peek and I won't help you. I mean, sometimes it's good to have some secrecy, but I'm not pushing that. I'm pushing the alternative, which is kind of the open source model because I come from the sort of open source community. OSCON, I'm at this, at this time reading the proposals. Um, lots of people are doing that. It's not just up to me what talks get accepted by any means, but I have my input, right? And I get a ticket for that. Like, I don't get paid, but I get to go to OSCON, which is right here in Portland, so perfect. Then I get to see, you know, if I was right. I pick these kind of talks, and if they get in, if they're picked, I can go and see, yeah, that was a good talk. Not that I always get to them all. Okay, well, I can see them on video later, right? So let's 
end this, I just wanted to, again, encourage you to take the concentric hierarchy, kind of the Sesame Street of synergetics, and put that out there without necessarily buying into all kinds of positions you know nothing about and don't have time to learn. In the meantime, if you do want to get more deeply into the Bucky literature, which you may want to, let me point you to, I'll close with this excellent, if I can figure out how to use my Kindle, I'll close with this, okay, how do I close? Sorry, I will go back to the cover of this excellent book. So when D.W. Jacobs was through here just recently in Portland, he gave me a copy of this book um, that's his play in Polish and about Buckminster Fuller, right? Our Buckminster Fuller, History and Mystery of the Universe in Polish and in English. So in this book by, um, bam, in this book by, Scott Eastman, which I thought, you know, I haven't, I, it turns out I hadn't really read it until just recently. Excellent, excellent book. It, it's about stirring up debate, getting us to talk about the future. The whole thing I'm into is science fiction and Martian math, getting us to imagine the future and debate it. It's, it's, it's utopia versus dystopia. It's always going to be that. It's not like, oh, you're just a utopian, dismiss, dismiss. No, it's like, what are we going to do in the future? Like, how are we going to develop? And this is a debate that's not going away, right? It's part of what we call the pro democratic process even, just to all of us work collaboratively on creating the future. So that's what this book is kind of about, but also the lineage where it comes from in terms of going back into the past original vision and so on. So in this book, uh, we start with where is a good, what is a good first exposure to Bucky's thinking? And Scott here actually does suggest starting with um, D.W. Jacob's play about Bucky, the history and mystery of universe. That's what he says is a good entry point. I'm looking for that exact quote here somewhere. It'd be nice to get that recorded. Otherwise, grab yourself a copy of the book, right? Let's see, is it on this page? Uh, he talks about Prague I just saw going by. We have a, anyway, there's a lot of literature that you're going to, I think, enjoy if you do want to dive into the deep end. But I'm saying go ahead and teach the concentric hierarchy, the Sesame Street of Polyhedra in your makerspace without feeling like you have to do a ton of homework first in all of this literature that's out there, synergetics itself being thick enough, and then there's all this other stuff, as I was showing you in Trevor's bibliography. Don't feel like you have to master all that before you just get into measuring cups and volumes and S modules and phi scaling and all this cool stuff, because that stands on its own is what I'm trying to say. You have every right to use that material without also buying into a position on particle physics or the Big Bang or UFOs or any of that. You're welcome to have all those opinions. It's just don't feel like as a teacher just want to do arts and crafts stuff that you have to drink the Kool-Aid if there is such, right? That was my reassurance, and that's the message of this video. All right, I'm going to let you go now. Hope that was entertaining, and we'll see you next time.